Are you looking for a free open source platform for selling tickets online? Let's discover High Events, the ultimate event management platform. If you are Lady Gaga and need to organize your next life, or just a passionate about open source software and want to organize a local meetup, High Events is here for you. With its modern user interface, it includes every tool to organize online and offline events such as ticket purchase, coupons, event page, mailing tools and ticket forms, and even a QR code scanner for tickets check-in. Before diving into the platform overview and discovering its features, let's see the options we have to start using it. You can register for the private beta of their cloud version. You can also self-deploy it by following their installation with Docker Guide. Or you can use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy the self-hosted version on the cloud provider of your choice while we take care of the installation, backups, updates and maintenance for you. To install High Events using our platform, head to ls.io and click on Login. Then deploy my first service. You have the list of all the different services. Search for High Events, click on Select. Choose between the different cloud providers, region and service plans based on your need. Then hit Next. Adjust if needed the different settings. Choose your level of support. I will keep the free included one. And once you are ready, hit the Create Service button. When your instance is ready, you will receive an email. Follow the click here to get the password link. Copy the password to your clipboard with this button and access your instance by following the admin UI link. Enter your LSTO email account address and paste the password from your clipboard and then log in. All right, as the organizer, we need to set up our account. Either we are a company or a person, we need to set up some basic details. Organizer name, I will use LSTO. Email address, OK. You have the choice between different currency. I will stick to USD and you can adjust the time zone. I will use mine so it will help me when I will configure different things. Then create organizer. During the onboarding process, we have the choice to create our first event or to skip this step. But let's create our first event. Let's name it open source meetup. The start date, we can use the calendar with the time picker. Let's say it's tomorrow from half past five to tomorrow. Oh, it's not automatically setting up a date after the start date. And let's say it lasts two hours, enough time to discuss a little bit. Create event. We arrive on that very good looking user interface. And currently we are on our event page. We have some onboarding process with different steps to follow. Let's follow them one by one. So first is adding tickets. Let's create our tickets for our event. The first thing to choose is the type of ticket. You can choose pay ticket, free ticket, donations or tiered tickets. We'll keep the simplest one, pay ticket. Let's name it standard ticket. In the description, main ticket. And in the price, oh, I wanted to show you the pay what you like. So it's in donation. Let's do it. And you can define a minimum price. So you can put it free and people will be able to pay more. Or you can say it's at least two and people will be able to put much more. But at least you will be sure that everyone purchase it at a minimum price. Quantity available. Let's stick to unlimited, but you can adjust if you have a limited slot. If you can only host 10 people, you will define 10. Otherwise, unlimited, for example, if it's an online event. Then you can adjust the tax, the minimum and maximum per order. For example, if it's a limited event and you don't want people to purchase a lot of tickets and resell them, you can say only one ticket per person or two or three, but not many. You can also define when the sale starts, when it ends, and a few options to decide if the tickets are still visible, if they are out of stock or if they are not available yet. Can you show them, but they will not be able to purchase them right now or just wait until it's available? Those kind of settings. Let's create our ticket. We arrive on the list of our tickets. You have that nice UI representing an actual ticket. You can edit the settings, message the attendees. But for now, let's go back to the onboarding to follow the different steps. So the second step is to set up our event. Let's do it. We already set up the name, but now we can add a description. Let's say, welcome to open source lovers meetup. 
a whatever you like it presents me in the world to us. Then in the start and date we already did it and save. Before having a look at the location, just to show you, you can adjust some checkout settings. So after people purchase their tickets and some SEO settings for the event page, we will see it after. But for now, the location. So you have the choice if you have an offline event to put the venue address or if it's online just to give the URL to join the event and some indication, for example, a password. But let's say it's an offline event. You can put some information LSTO headquarters and you can type an address and the custom map URL is if it's not able automatically to generate the right Google map address by what you type, you can copy paste the URL of the address. Let me type the address of my previous office and we will see if it automatically fetched the right URL. All right, two steps completed. Now we can customize our event page. You have different settings on the left to change the design mainly, and on the right, the preview of what it will look like. First, let's see our link of the event. And it's correct, and the address is the one of my previous office, but it was not able to find the actual billing, so it could be helpful to use a custom map URL. But it's a demo, we won't do it. Let's upload a cover. Let's use this one. It's uploading and then it will be put on top of our page. And then we can adjust different colors. One for the background, but you can define if you want an image for the background or a color. Let's keep a color. And with this, instead of using the color picker here, I can use one from LSTO logo. So the identity will be good. Then we have this color, which is primary and secondary. But to be able to use the picker, let's go back to the logo. Primary, let's use this one. And secondary, let's say the purple. And you can see the colors are automatically updated. You can also change the continue button text. But continue is good and let's save the changes. Let's try here if our limit works. So the minimum amount was uh, two. So if we type one, well, I need to choose a number of tickets. And it's telling me I need to put at least two. If I do it, I'm redirected to the event and to the checkout. But maybe it's best if I show you with multiple tickets at once. So let's go back to the event page. Now I'm not in preview, but I'm really seeing the event page. Let's say I want two tickets and continue. Let's enter fake names, but a real email address and either you type the name email address for each of them or if it's the same from the payment details you can just copy the details to all of them at once for this example let's do it and let's continue to payment but we didn't set up a payment provider so we have an error at this step so it's very important to do it before setting your tickets so setting up our payment provider i think it's the next step so, oh yeah, set your event live. Okay, we can do it. So it will do it automatically for us. And then connect with Stripe. Let's do it. Unfortunately, we are able to configure Stripe from here with Stripe Connect account only if you are using their SaaS cloud version. But don't worry, we can configure it very easily even using the self-hosted one. It's just that instead of using the UI, you need to set environment variables to your instance. So you need for the front end, the Stripe publishable key. And for the back end, you will need three different keys. With LSTO, it's very easy to add environment variables. You need on the overview page to go to update config and to change the variables. So in env, we already have an example for the vid Stripe publishable key and you have pk underscore test. If you have a Stripe account, you need to go to developers. No worries, I'm using the test mod, so the keys I will show you won't be leaked. Go to API keys, and now we need the publishable key, the one starting with pk. Copy, and after the equal sign, paste in the variable. Then in Docker Compose, because it's using Docker to deploy your self-hosted version, you can see the environment mapping is done here. So for 
Stripe Publishable key, it's taking the variable we defined in env. But you can also do it like this. We will do it like this for the other ones. For the backend, we need these ones. You can type them directly here, the name and the value. Instead of using the variable, you can paste directly the value. Then we will need, I think it's secret key and webhook key. I will verify just after. All right, secret and webhook secret. So be careful of this. Don't make the same mistake. Webhook secret. And on Stripe, to get the secret key, you need to reveal it and to copy. Here it is. And for the webhook secret, we need to create a webhook first. Simply on Stripe, next to API keys, webhooks, and then add endpoint. So you need a URL and the documentation is very well done. You just have to follow the steps. So the URL is your URL slash API slash public. So let's copy it. Then we type it and then check the URL of your instance. So ending by slash app and you can try to have slash API. If you see this page, congratulations, it means it's the right URL. Now we can take the slash API part and replace with our URL. So description, we don't need one. Listen to events on this account. The version we take your current version or maybe the latest one and select events to listen to. Select all events. Add events. You can see all of them here and add an endpoint. Once your webhook is ready, on the top right, you have the secret. Simply replace it here and update and restart. It will need to restart your server to set up the environment variable. Once it's finished, simply go back to your instance so you can see all the upcoming events. Open it. You arrive on the admin dashboard, which for now is empty. So let's open the event page and let's try to process a payment. We want one ticket. Let's go faster. Type your information, copy details, perfect. Continue to payment. Let's pray that we have the credit card and perfect. So now we are in test mode. So this card 4242 will work. We just need to enter a date in the future, 25 a fake security code and once you are good complete payment processing on the order and perfect order completed we have the order details the different guests i only choose myself you have your qr code you can print it copy the link of course in your mailbox you receive your order confirmed on a separate email because maybe you use a different email address for the ticket and for the order you receive a calendar invite and a link to download your ticket. And as the organizer, you also receive a mail to notify you of an order. If we reload our dashboard, you can see one ticket sold, two dollars of sales, zero page view because we never opened it really when it was live, and one order created. And you have those nice chart of ticket sales and revenue. You have other tools available, for example, the attendees. So you have the list of all the people joining your event. Instead of selling the tickets, you can also invite people manually by entering their name and email address. You can also export the list and send a different message manually. So message attendee, you can write something to individual attendees. But this is a feature you also have if you go to messages. You are able to send a message to all the attendees at once. If you have information to share, it's ideal. One other great feature is the questions. So when you sell tickets, sometimes you need to add some additional information more than just the name and email to your attendees. Let's add a question. You have different types. Ask once per order or once per attendee. Let's choose per order. And which pizza would you like to eat? So let's make it mandatory or we can hide the question. So let's create it. Oh, but I didn't edit the type. So edit question. And we have the choice between different types. So a text box, they can type whatever they want. But us, let's say we have decided which pizza we want. So let's add an option, cheese, pepperoni. And 
meatball. Okay, edit question. And on the right, you have the nice preview. So when people order, they will have different information to fill, but also this question, which pizza would you like to eat? And they choose between the different values. If you need to boost your attendees list and your sales, you can use the promo code features, which has everything you need to define some promo code and discounts. You can also use the check-in list feature for the day of the event. First, you need to create a check-in list. Let's say regular tickets. You choose which tickets it refers to. We only have one type, but you can select multiple at once. A description for the staff in charge of the check-in and when it's doable, when it starts, when it ends, or you can leave it empty and it's always on. So here you can do open check-in page and you have the choice between checking manually by using the search bar here and the list of all the attendees. You can click on check-in or you can use the QR code, but this is best if you use this URL on your mobile. Then we already have seen the homepage designer, but once you have it, you need to share it. So either you can share the link directly or you can embed it on your website by using the HTML script or using the React integration that they provide. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering high events with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, I recommend you watch this video, available here.